clothed us in our right mind, and he did all that, and we didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. We couldn't sit at no table and negotiate it with it. He did it just because he's God, and he's God all by himself. Give him a hand clap of praise. Oh, if Barack walked through the door, you'd clap longer than that, louder than that. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let me begin by saying thank you to our pastor, Pastor Wright. Uh, as Sister, uh, Minister Brooks said, I'm no stranger to you guys. Y'all have seen me before. Uh, in past times, I was elated to say that Minister Burroughs called and asked me to come in and uh, step in for it, but this time, my own pastor called me and asked me to come in, so I am so glad that he entrusted me with his sheep and uh, that he believes in me enough to allow me to teach the seniors, the well-seasoned members of the church of the Fountain of Praise. Amen? Um, we're going to stay along in the book of John where you have been uh, um, working out of. Um, I know many of you have an outline, so if you have that outline, I just want you to know that I'm, I will be in John chapter 4, and I just received my outline about 20 minutes ago, so uh, God, God is definitely going to have his way this afternoon, amen? It is so wonderful to see you guys. Um, this is how I used to be back in the day when we used to do noon Bible studies, just sitting room only. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of John chapter 4. Uh, if you have your Bibles, let me see them, let me see them, let me see them, let me see them, let me see them. I know you got them, I know, amen. Do we have any, oh, and I see a couple of phones, amen, oh man, amen, amen, amen. The book of John chapter 4, and, uh, Pastor did tell me that he started on this last week. And again, I, I can't even explain to you guys how, how full I am that Pastor Wright would allow me to stand before you. It is indeed an honor to have your pastor ask you to stand in his seed for him. So I, I, I really, I'm going to ask God to have his way. Chapter 4, before we begin, let me just say my own personal prayer. But Sister Brooks, thank you for that awesome prayer. God, how we thank you and we love you. God, how we praise you. Use me for the, hide me behind the cross. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are and will forever be our kins and redeemer. And let the people of God who agree say amen. amen. So, I am going to stay in the book of John, chapter 4. But you know, many of you who have been with me, I have my own KJV version, and I'm not talking about the King James. <laughs> amen. We know what it is, right? The Key Jones version. Amen. So we are going to stay in the book of John chapter 4, but I want to dissect something. I, I want to go to two or three verses, and I want to pull some out of it. And I'm going to try my best to piggyback off our pastor. Amen. In the book of John, the fourth chapter, go to verse number 10. When you have it, say amen. If you need more time, say wait a minute. Amen. Thus begins the reading in verse number 10. I'm reading out the NIV. It says, it says Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Let's read it again. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Drop down to verse number 31. 
same chapter, verse 31. You have it? Say amen. amen. It says, meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then the disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? Jesus replied, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And God have the blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his holy word. I want to tag this text, this, 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 this little study that we're going to do today. A meal you will never forget. A meal you will never forget. Well, it's going to be hard to stand still right here. Woo! I like this text. Last week, Pastor Wright talked about the Samaritan woman who Jesus met at the well, or they ended up at the well, however you want to say it. And he asked her for a drink of water. I don't know about you guys, but when I have my meal at home, I want something to drink with it. So I want you to use your sanctified mind to think about this meal that you'll never forget. And the first portion of this meal was a drink of water. The text says when he asked the lady for drink of water, Jesus replied, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. A meal that can change your life forever. Jesus, use your mind, is at the well with the woman. And she asked, he asked her for a drink. But he, he asked her for a drink, and then he told her something after he asked. In other words, he didn't even give her a, a chance to reply. Look, it's in your Bible too, unless you tore it out. In fact, it's even in red. It says, if you knew who was the one asking you for this drink, yeah, you wouldn't even be asking me, no, you wouldn't be looking at me funny. Oh, come on now. Have you ever been hot, thirsty, took a walk, come in, and you, you just want something to cool you down? And you ask your significant other, or maybe your child or your grandchild, can you give mama or daddy a glass of water? And they're looking at you like, and in your mind you're saying, boy, if you don't give me some water, I'm thirsty, I'm parched. Have, have you ever had a conversation where you talk so much and you get parched? Yeah. I, I'm a preacher, and, 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 and sometimes we can, somebody can ask you a simple question, and before you know it, we talk so much you just parched. You just need some water to quench your thirst. Jesus tells this woman, I have water that can change your life. Oh, because I know all about you. Before he, notice in the text, he didn't even ask her name. So I want you for a second to put your name right there. In fact, place yourself at the well. He knows all about each and every one of us. Why do you say that, Reverend Joe? Because he created us. He says to the woman, if you'd have just known that I knew everything about you, oh yeah. You'd have got me some water. Real quick. The Samaritan lady goes on to say the well is deep and she started making all kinds of excuses about why she couldn't get no water. You know, I'm this and you that and we ain't supposed to be doing this and we ain't supposed to be talking and all that and, and, and this and that and this. That's just like us. When Jesus stretches out his hand or is there to assist us, we have every excuse in the book not to accept. Walk away from it. I'm helping somebody this afternoon. 
But he said, if you just take a second and really understand who you're talking to, can I make that portable? If you just take a second and think back in your mind, 30 seconds ago, if I would have just took my hand off of you, there wouldn't be any of you. See, some of us spend too much time thinking about last year what he done. I just dare some of y'all to just think about this morning when he woke you up. I don't know about y'all, but when I turned 50 years old, I would go to bed just feeling all good. And the next morning, wake up and some hurt, and I'm like, who I've been fighting in the bed? But yet and still, he woke me up. I can remember the song that the wine used to sing, many millions didn't make it. But I was one of the ones who did. Because I recognized when I had the opportunity to accept and drink the water of the living God, I didn't let it pass me by. Anybody in the house this afternoon has partaken of that living water? They didn't let it pass them by? Come on now. I know I'm not the only one. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. If you knew. If you knew. But here's, here's, here's the killer part. A lot of times we play like we don't know. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Yeah, you know. You know. You know that that sister need help, but you don't help. You know that that brother is down and out, but you don't assist. You know that you need to be at church, but you don't go. Hello. You know that you need to be more active in the church, but you're not. You know that you're supposed to pay your tithes, but you don't. Oh, but if you knew that this living water could change your life. Let me see the hands of those who Jesus has really changed your life. You don't do what you used to do. You don't go where you used to go. You don't say what you used to say because you have drank, you have partaken of the living water. I like this. I like that. It's just something about that water. You know, you can drink a Coke, Kool-Aid, liquid diabetes, sugar. You know, the kind that grandma used to make so sweet, make your teeth hurt. But it's just something about water. Something about the name Jesus. Living water. The woman at the well quickly came to her senses. She said, I've heard about you. Now, y'all do know this is the KJV version, right? Amen, amen. I've heard about you. I knew somebody told me you were on the way. And obviously, I've met you face to face. Well, how do you know? Because you made the statement to me. If you knew who asked you for some water, you'd have jumped straight to it. I like that. I like that. This is a, a water that nourishes, replenishes, revives, rejuvenates. The last time I was with you, I told you my favorite characteristic of Jesus is that he's a just God. This water is just what you need. It's just. It don't look at what you did in the past. It's not even concerned about that. That's why we can pray the prayer, Lord, forgive me of my sins and cast them in the sea of forgiveness. Never to be brought back on me again. It's just. It's just water. A water that can change your life forever. Oh, this Samaritan woman say, I heard about you. I heard you've been doing great things. Yeah, and, and not only 
have I heard that you were doing great things? Now I'm standing before you, and as I stand before you, what I like about you is you're just. You know everything about me, but you don't hold it against me. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, you've been married five times, and the man at your house, you're not even married to him. But if you knew, I'm trying to help somebody. Somebody sitting here this afternoon has a cloud over their head. And if you knew about this living water, you'd take a drink. And you'd understand that whatever it is that's over your head, whatever trial or tribulation that you're going through, the living water can replenish, rejuvenate you, give you a fresh start. Ah, uh, but I've been walking with the Lord for 30, 40 years. Let me tell you something. This is for free. I don't care how long you've been walking with Jesus. We all need a fresh start. The Bible says every day we receive what? Brand new mercies. Huh? Can I help somebody? If we were still living on the old mercy, some of us be out of it. Wouldn't have any more. We might have dropped out by age two, three, four. Y'all remember what I told y'all about Johnny? Johnny, what you doing in that room? Nothing. Who told Johnny to lie like that? Oh, you didn't have to teach him that. You had to teach him to understand that there is a God who changes not. He can change you, but you can't, cha Ooh, you can't change him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If you knew. Samaritan woman at the well said Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Uh, Jesus walked the earth and he didn't come for the just. He came for the unjust. I told you once before, the custodians are not the first ones at the church on Sunday. No, 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 no. Satan is waiting. He's on the pew before you even get there. How do you know that, preacher? Because some of them act the fool when, he, when they feel like you sitting in their seat not knowing that it's God's house. Satan had already touched the pew, so when you sit down, you done already start cutting up. Why are you in my seat? All these seats in here, you want to sit in my seat? He's here first. Jesus came for the unjust. He didn't walk with the dignitaries and the diplomats and the priests and all. He walked with the thieves and the, the thugs and all them folks. I need them on my team. I used to often wonder, if you've been here as long as Sister Brooks and some of you have, um, we started Armor Bears probably 99 maybe, around 99, 98. And I was one of Pastor Wright's first on Armor Bears. One is first. But I was the first one to say in my mind, never out my mouth, because I told y'all some things you just ought to think. It should never come out your mouth. But I said this in my mind. Why he needs somebody walking with him? Who is he? Let me help you. Bible scholars. Anytime Jesus walked around, he had three people with him. Peter, James, and John. Uh, let, me, let, let me let you in on something else. One of them packed the knife. Huh? Two of them were called the bolts of thunder. Ah, uh, I said, well, Lord, why was y'all 
calling them the sons of thunder. Get out of line, I can show you. <laughs> Peter was so tough that when they came to get Jesus, he reached in his pocket. He didn't go nowhere. He reached in his pocket. So that let me know he was carrying it. He had it already. He was packing already. Went in his pocket and cut the man ear off. And then, if you knew, bend down and put the, the man's ear back on. If you knew that you served a God that can do anything except fail, you drink water all the time. You'd be in your Bible all the time. The Bible says pray without ceasing. You pray all the time. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If you knew. I don't know about you, but that's a good drink to have with a meal. Uh, the most replenishing, refreshing thing that you could ever have with a meal. Tonight when you go home and eat, don't drink soda. Don't get that cup of coffee. Just pick up some water and drink some water. Watch this. When I was on my sabbatical, we would have a prayer every night. And some nights, instead of asking God for anything, I would just call out the name Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Kathy Taylor said, the more I call them, the better I feel. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus in the midnight hour. Jesus when I'm up. Jesus when I'm down. Jesus when I'm going through. Jesus when I come out. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Man, that's some good water. Oh, Jesus. Give God a hand clap of praise. Turn over to verses 31. It says, meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. I like that. Somebody said he's bread when I'm hungry and water when I'm thirsty. That's a mighty good meal. I, I, I'm not fortunate to say this, but I, 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 and I say fortunate because some of you that are in here, that's all you had sometimes was bread and water. And you wondered how, when you full after the bread, you wonder how that bread just tastes so good. It, it, Sometimes it just tastes like a steak and y your friends were telling you what they ate and you was ashamed, hello, to say that all I had was bread and water. But the bread that you ate, because mama prayed over it and Jesus touched it, when it touched your body, it filled you just like potatoes, just like steak, just like anything else that you would eat. Nothing but bread, nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. He says, I have food that you didn't even know I had. Watch this. I have forgiveness. Hello. I have kindness. I have patience. I have love. I have understanding. I have long suffering. 
Ah, truth be told, if some of us would eat a little more of that, we wouldn't have as much weight as we have on us. Bread of life. They wandered in the desert for 40 years. Manna rained out of heaven. Bread came out of heaven. Every day they had an opportunity to physically eat a little of Jesus because it came directly from Jesus. Oh, but they didn't know. How can we wander in the desert for 40 years and we don't need new clothes? How can we wander in the desert and our shoes don't get too small? How can we wander in the desert and we don't get hungry? I dare you. When you're going through adversity, trials, and tribulation, just eat a little bread from heaven. Just a little bread from heaven. Uh, life will put you in a situation where sometimes you have more month than money. Your pennies might not be many. Your change is strange. You're wondering, where am I going to get it from? But he said, if you knew. And I said earlier, if you just think back 30 seconds, you ain't got to go 30 days or 30 minutes, just 30 seconds. Everybody in this room, if God just took his hands off of all of us, it's funny, we don't breathe the same air. When we go to sleep, he keep me, he keep you. I'm not depending on you to go to sleep so I can get rest tomorrow. Amen? God takes care of us individually. There's enough bread in heaven to feed the world. There shouldn't be any hungry folks. I made it plain for you. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Watch this. A lot of us get the physical knees mixed up. Can I help y'all? At the name of Jesus, everything you going through got to bow. Because everything we go through sometimes can bring us to our knees. But whatever it is you're going through, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every demon got to back off. At the name of Jesus, this bread from heaven. You can't go in the H-E-B and buy it, baby. They don't sell it at Walmart. Ah, uh, CVS don't have it, and your doctor can't write a prescription for it. But this is something. The Bible says that when the enemy rushes in like a flood, that God will lift up a standard. I need you to know this afternoon, if you don't have no Bible in you, baby, God can't lift up nothing out of you. So I need you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Here it is. God has brought you too far to turn back. And you'd be foolish if you let go of his hand right now. You ever thought how funny it is that even in your mess, he's still blessed. When he should have allowed you to be taken out, he kept you. When you wasn't lovable, he loved you. When you were lost and didn't even want no direction, he guided you and he kept you. I'm reminded of Peter when he was in the boat and Jesus told him, come to me. Other disciples were there and they looked at him like the woman looked at Jesus when he asked her for some water. Peter, you going to go out there? Go. I ain't going. But you go. I'm going somewhere. If you got that word in you, if you've been eating that bread, 
from heaven. It'll give you faith, which means forsaken all, I trust him. Let me say that again, faith. Forsaken all, I trust him. So Peter says, you know what? Since I trust him, and since I'm full of this bread, I'm going to step out of the boat. And I'm going to walk toward him. And as he's walking toward him, I can see in my spiritual mind that he drops down. Scholars have said that he took his eye off of Jesus. Uh, but I believe in my sanctified mind that when Jesus, when Peter went down into the water, that Jesus didn't grab Peter by the arm and pull him up. I believe in my sanctified mind, Jesus said, I know you have been eating bread from heaven. So I'm not going to pull you up by your arm. I'm going to grab your faith and pull you up and bring you back up. And by faith, we're going to walk back to the boat together. Something about that bread that when it's in your body, Jesus can latch on to it. But you have to have it in you. You have to eat it. You can't talk about it, baby. You got to be about it. I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. But you don't ever pray to him. You got that genie mentality. You just rub on the bottle when you need him. No. Pray without ceasing. We walk by faith. And not by sight. Daily we ought to be eating some bread. When you get up in the morning, eat some bread. When you sit down in the noonday, eat some bread. When you get ready to lay down at night, eat some bread. I can hear old people saying, fill me till I want no more. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm always want it. I don't never get enough of it. Because I don't ever know what's coming my way. And because I don't ever know what's coming my way, I need to always be full of Jesus. My faith in Jesus. Stay full of the bread. He tells his disciples, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could somebody else bought us some food? Hmm. A lot of us been walking with Jesus or claim we've been walking with Jesus, but the first time of adversity, we look to something else. Somebody else. The disciple said, Did somebody else bring him some food? No, he is the food. He is the breath and the bread of life. The food he has, you don't know nothing about. You have not eyes have not seen ears have not heard you ain't been through your biggest dilemma but I need to serve you notice that your biggest dilemma is not bigger than the Jesus whatever it is you face God can handle it he said you don't take my life I lay it down that means if I lay it down I can pick it up whenever I get ready to this bread this bread of life, it's a meal that you've never had before, nor shall you ever eat it again. And the one thing I, I like about this meal is once I eat it, I'm full. I don't need nothing else to go with it. I don't need Elijah Muhammad. I don't need Malcolm. I don't need none of them. All I need is Jesus. That's it. That's all I need is Jesus. Whatever I'm facing, whatever I, I have to face, whatever I have faced, because truth be told, we done been through some things and you sitting there scratching your head, how did I get out of that? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. It wasn't because you looked so good and your bank account was so big. Or your car was so pretty, or you got them red bottom hit. Uh -uh, uh 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 It was Jesus. It was Jesus. 
the text goes on to say, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me. Not only to do the will, but to finish his work. To do the will of him who sent me. Well, what was that will, Jesus? To save the unjust. To give my life for the imperfect, the perfect for the unperfect. To come and lay down my life so that those who went to the well and had a drink of the living water would have a chance for everlasting life. Regardless of what they may have done or what they were going to do, once they partake of the living water and have eaten of the bread of life, you have a chance to get it right. Jesus will make a way out of no way. You may not be able to see it with this eye, but God has an eye that sees everything. He sits high and he looks low. Nothing will ever come to you without passing you first. Understand this, your present situation is not your destination, but preparation for your elevation. Yes, that's how I said it. Your situation is not your destination, but it's preparation for your elevation. What you're going through right now, God is preparing you for where he's getting ready to take you. Understand, when you're on your back, when you're at the bottom, the only place you can go is to the top. So don't cry when you're in the valley. Don't be dismayed when you're going through trials and tribulations. Don't be disgusted because things not going the way that you want them to do. Understand, you have drank from the well, from the, from the living well, the living water. You have partaken from the bread of life. He got you. He got you. When mama don't got you, Jesus. When daddy don't got you, Jesus. When brothers and sisters don't have you, Jesus. When friends don't have you, Jesus. Jesus. He's a healer. Go on down into the text where the man said, and what I like about him, he don't even have to be present. All you have to do is call on his name, Jesus. The man told him that his son was dying. And he said, no, your son will live. He wasn't even where his son was, but he spoke a word. And he was healed. Man didn't believe it, so he asked his friend, well, what time did this happen? No, they said about one o'clock. He said, well, you know what? That's about the time that Jesus said he was healed. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? That's why it's imperative that we keep some bread in us all day, every day. Drink that water all day, every day. Understand, nothing, nothing, everybody say nothing, nothing, that you will go through, it has to pass God first before it ever get to you. How you know that preacher? He said in his word, I'll never put more on you than you can bear. His word says, it doesn't go out and return unto him void. What he sends it out to do, it shall accomplish. So it's something about this meal. Uh, when I use my mind, I'm sitting at the table, and I've had a long day, and Satan's been on my tail, and I don't know what else to do. But I know one thing, that there's a living God. And I know another thing, that he's faithful and he's just. I know another thing, that as long as I eat his bread, I'm going to be all right. May not look good to me, but I'm going to be all right. May not come when I want him, but one thing is for certain, he's going to come. That's the thing I like about Jesus. He said in his word, I change it not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If I did it back then, surely I can do it right now. Surely I can do it right now. Surely 
I can do it right now. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Give God a hand clap of praise. If you knew, if you knew, let me see the hands of us who know. Amen. Amen. God bless your heart. 